Hello AP Calculus BC students for our final video that covers Unit 9. We're in Topic 9.9, .9, still talking about polar area and those really tricky problems that involve two shapes and some kind of enclosed um, type of region. Now in this particular problem, we're going to be finding not so much uh, an area that's common to two curves, but an area that lies inside one particular curve but at the same time outside. And so as you can see from our picture we have a limosone um, and a circle and our job is to find the area that's located inside that limosone shape but at the same time it has to be outside of the circle. And I'll leave it up to you to decide ultimately does this polar curve resemble more of Toad from the Mario Brothers world or maybe it's a better picture of a young Michael Jackson, maybe, from the early 70s. One of my favorite artists. Anyhow, we'll take a look at our example two from topic 9.9 .9 here. So here's our graph, a little bit larger, a little bit more detail. And uh, we now have a little bit more information in, in way of what the equations of these polar curves are. So find the area that is inside the polar region, r equal 3 plus 2 sine theta, and outside the, uh, the circle, r equal 2. So we're going to have to develop a strategy, as always, um, that really focuses on two different realms. The first realm is, are we going to be looking at an addition of two separate polar area integrals, or are we going to be looking at the subtraction of two separate polar area integrals? And then the second realm, do we have enough symmetry in this problem to set up our definite integrals and then double the final answer? So it doesn't really matter which one of those you tackle first. Sometimes they both can be addressed simultaneously and you, you sort of stumble upon uh, the answers. So let's go ahead and just go with our general strategy, which is to always stand at the pole, take our magic flashlight that we've talked about, and shine it towards one of these cave walls to figure out what is it that we're looking at. So if I turn that flashlight and I actually decide to go to this point of intersection, which I think was a very smart thing to do, because if I go to that point of intersection and if I start shining that light along the outside wall, I would actually be illuminating both the circle and the limosone. And if you see that if I continue to do that all the way through to the top, then I could conceivably say that I have discovered half of this region that still needs to be modified. And that modification that we need all suggests that I have to subtract off the area of this circular part. I think we've answered both of our questions. A, we will be doing a subtraction process, and B, there is enough symmetry that we can indeed double. So I think our general line of thinking with this problem will be as such that the total area can be found by finding the area of the limosone and subtracting the area of the circle. For the purpose of finding the area of the limosone, I am going to go ahead and double, as we talked about, the integration setup. So that would be 1 half times the integral of the limosome, which is 3 plus 2 sine of theta, all squared with respect to theta. Now, of course, the only thing that we have to worry about at this stage is our boundaries of integration. So let's take a look at that next. So we want to know what is this initial starting angle measure down here. Notice where the 
angle is located, that can be very helpful. It does appear to be the intersection of the two curves. So what better way to find that intersection than by setting these two equations equal to each other? Upon doing that, we would see that the sine of theta would be negative 1 over 2. I would subtract the 3 and divide by the 2. Now hopefully you realize that a, a sine of theta that's equal to positive half is typically a, a pi over 6, right? A reference angle of pi over 6. And if you're not sure about that, we can take you through the process where opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2 would yield a 60 degree, I'm sorry, a 30 degree angle, uh, which is a pi over 6. But since sine is negative, that means we have a little bit different situation on our hands. All students to take calculus is our mnemonic, and we want sine to be negative, so that forces us to be in quadrants 3 and 4. So the pi over 6 reference angle in quadrants 3 and 4 turns out to be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now because we're over here more so in this fourth quadrant, it appears that we want the 11 pi over 6. But that's a bit of an issue. That's a bit of a problem. Because our upper boundary cannot be smaller than the lower boundary. So the 11 pi over 6 sort of puts us in a situation where we're almost maybe forced to have a larger upper boundary unless we did something crazy and went around the shape once and then began with 2 pi as our 0, which I don't think that's a very intuitive way to do this. So what I would suggest is just to kind of think of another way to say 11 pi over 6. And hopefully the idea that it's equivalent to negative pi over 6 isn't too lost upon you because that's exactly what we want to do with this. We can start with values that are less than 0. There's nothing against us doing that. Now, as far as where are we going to be here at the top, Again, you can do a lot of different things with that. Intuitively, a student might think, well, the top of this shape is probably a pi over 2. Let's try it. There's nothing wrong with at least assuming that and then just putting it to the test. So if we do let theta be pi over 2, we see that the sine of pi over 2 is 1, 3 plus 2 is 5, and that is exactly where we find ourselves there. So I believe we have our boundaries negative pi over 6 all the way up to pi over 2, making sure that we've doubled everything does indeed give us the area of this sort of uh, blue created region without having to shade it all in. Now as I said before, we're going to go ahead and find the area of all of this red region. Again, I'm not going to shade it all in, but I'll kind of like highlight some of the main parts of it. And so it's a very similar process. We're just going to integrate from those same exact boundaries. But of course, we're going to subtract. So we will subtract 2 times 1 half. And the boundaries are just the same. Negative pi over 6 to pi over 2. And our function's a lot simpler. It's just a 2 that we need to square. And that would be your setup that would work perfectly to find the area of this entire shaded region. Now, if you were to type this into the calculator to verify whether or not it was correct, um, you would get something along the lines of 22 pi over 3 plus 11 root 3 over 2 for the limosone. And then uh, we get 8 pi over 3. I believe, for just the circle portion. And then by the time we combine like terms with this and whatnot, we end up with a 14 pi over 3 plus 11 root 3 over 2. But as I said before, the focus on these problems is not so much 
what we get for the final answer. It's not necessarily the long, arduous task of having to expand this out and, and, and take its integral, which I know we can do as long as you guys are all comfortable with how to integrate something like sine squared, which just simply means that you have to use a somewhat popular trig identity that, that we've used in our classes many times, like, like this. Um, but the main focus has been setting this thing up and understanding what boundaries you're going to use and what uh, a strategy in terms of plus or minus. Anyway, I hope this has been very productive for you. This is the final video from Unit 9. And uh, uh, now it's just a matter of getting some practice in and getting more confident in the final polar areas. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.